I know when I'm doing dietary interventions with my patients, they always want to know, is this forever? Is this my new normal? How do you frame that so, conversation with your patients? So I, I remind them that they are always the one who is in charge, who's in charge of their life. And I invite them to think of this as an experiment. Uh, and let's decide how long you want your experiment to be. Now, if you're in my trials, it's like, okay, this is a two-year experiment. Uh, and what has been super interesting, so people come in, they're like, oh, my God. They're so pleased with how, how well they have done. And they're finished now that I'm going to sort of go back to my old diet. And they increase their carbs, maybe not all the way up to 200, you know, 300. And they write us and say, like, oh, my God, I feel so terrible. I have so much more pain. Uh, I'm having more brain fog. I, um, I have seen my neurologist. Uh, and they realize, you know what? It is for it because I feel so much better on that ketogenic diet. Or, or it may have been the modified paleo diet that, that thought, okay, they were going to go back and have, uh, you know, way more carbs in the modified paleo. And they felt remarkably worse. What, what we've seen consistently in every one of my dietary intervention studies, whether I'm doing uh, a modified paleo, a ketogenic, uh, or the uh, low-fat diet, is uh, people you know, do the interventions and then decide, okay, it's done. I can go back to my previous diet. They go back. And then they send us an email like, well, you know, my symptoms are really much worse when I leave. Uh, the dietary plan, so I've gone back to it. The modern westernized diet uh, is very inflammatory, very destructive. It's it's bad for us on so many levels. Uh, and um, so there are many diets that are helpful. Uh, the, however, I, 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 I think the research would suggest for cognitive decline and brain fog, a ketogenic diet because the ketone bodies are an alternative fuel to glucose for the brain. And there's evidence with severe mental health disorders and cognitive decline that those brains are not using glucose as well. Uh, and, but we can still use ketones really well. And the ketones wake up our brains, improve our moods, reduce anxiety, um, uh, and reduce brain fog. So for those people, I really want them to experience what a ketogenic diet can do for them. And then I tell them, you know, we can, we can decide how long you want to try this. I want you to do at least six months. And then you could go off if you want and see how you feel. Nine times out of ten, they contact me back and say, you know what? It is forever because I feel much better uh, doing that. The results speak for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, although I, I should make an, another observation that there are some individuals, uh, and we see this in pediatrics, uh, seizure disorders, and they uh, put kids on a ketogenic diet, uh, and usually after a year, they can liberalize the carbs for those children, and they continue to not have seizures, or if they have seizures, they're much more mild. So I, I think it is possible that there, we may find uh, in adults that some adults, after some time period of being a ketogenic eater, is it a year, two years, three years, that they could go back to a more paleo diet uh, of perhaps 80 grams and still have good control of their symptoms. We don't really have the, the answer for that for adults yet, um, but for children, six months to a year, uh, some of those kids are, can maintain good control of their seizures on, on a more moderate, not a standard American diet, but probably a more moderate paleo level uh, carbohydrate eating. So really the only way we would know is to experiment, right? Mm -hmm. Is to liberalize right. our carbohydrate intake a little bit, see what happens. And see what happens. You know, I want people to go preferably a year, uh, ideally to, uh, and so we tell our patients, yes, you can liberalize your carbs and see how you feel. And if you feel worse, go back on your diet. Uh, and so, you know, people are finishing our study. They're two, you know, uh, have done their two years. They're liberalizing their diets. And what we hear back is, you know what? I felt much better on the study diet, so I'm going back to it. Right. I think we have a good grasp on the macronutrients that we're looking for 
Are there some micronutrients that we need to be aware of for neuroprotection too? Yeah, so omega-3 fats, uh, a vital nutrient. Um, we know the uh, all the B vitamins are super important, uh, and B vitamins are water-soluble. So keep in mind when you're cooking your vegetables, you know, the greens, uh, and if you discard the fluid, you are discarding the B vitamins. So be sure if you're cooking your vegetables, eat all the fluids. Uh, uh, meat uh, is a good source of B vitamins. Uh, liver, really terrific source uh, of B vitamins. Uh, and a, a great source of easily absorbed minerals. You need uh, magnesium uh, and zinc, uh, manganese, uh, selenium, iodine uh, as well. Uh, and then uh, I really like the uh, vitamin K2 uh, because in, at least in the animal models, uh, vitamin K2 is a, a critical nutrient uh, for myelin. Uh, and it's a critical nutrient for calcium, managing calcium into your teeth and bones. Um, so I, I really want people to have three cups of, of greens cooked in raw uh, fermented foods. Uh, and that's whether you're a ketogenic eater or a uh, modified paleo eater, or uh, actually a Mediterranean eater. Mm -hmm. I, I know the, the WALS protocol has very intentional intake of certain foods, <clears throat> excuse me. And when we look at micronutrients, is this something that we need to have patients tracking with an app or working with a dietitian, well, or if they eat the foods, they're going to get the right things? Um, I, I think it's ideally, if you eat these radical things known as non-starchy vegetables and berries, uh, if you're a vegetarian, you need to work with a nutrition professional, be sure you know how to have uh, balanced uh, protein intake. Um, that will go a long way. Uh, if you if you're interested, you want to track your micronutrients, I, I think that would be fine. Uh, mostly I want to be sure that people have enough of their omega-3 fats, so wild fish, grass-finished meats. Um, if you're vegetarian, you have to lengthen the vegetarian uh, sources of omega-3s. Uh, and so you need, you, you can only convert about 5% of the vegetarian omega-3s to the long form DHA, EPA, omega-3s that we use in our brain. Uh, so that means you need 20 times as many omega vegetarian omega-3s as animal-based omega-3s. Um, so either DHA from algae or fish oil. Uh, it can be very, very, very helpful. And as we're looking at all these specific nutrients, the conversation about anti-nutrients always comes in and lectins come into oh, the yeah, conversation. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about the anti-nutrients. <laughs> lectins and oxalates, people are like, oh my God, you're all those greens, they're filled with oxalates, they're terrible for you. You exactly. can have low oxalate greens, things like uh, parsley, uh, kale, uh, collards. Uh, and there are high oxalate greens like spinach, uh, uh, Swiss chard, uh, beet greens. Uh, those will be higher in oxalates. For the vast majority of individuals, as long as you're having a rotated source of your greens, uh, you'll be fine. Keep in mind, we evolved from primates. We separated from other primates six million years ago. For millions of years, we've been eating greens. We co-evolved with the enzymes to detoxify the uh, toxic compounds on plants. And there are plenty, I will certainly agree. Those enzymes that detoxify them reduce our inflammation, improve our ability to detoxify, and help us run the chemistry of life more efficiently. There are societies that are carnivore only, eat only animal products. Uh, and yes, uh, and there is the carnivore movement. Uh, if you have a high fat diet with the carnivore movement, you'll be in a ketogenic diet. The, there are some risks with the carnivore diet, uh, accelerated aging, uh, acceler uh, higher risk of cancer because it, these are it's a pro-growth state. Um, so the carnivore diet is not without uh, its downside. 